Kofu uh, for the welcome address and I admire the appetite to grow this even as we're starting. Uh, when you have a belief that technology can transform a lot, it's demonstrated in your belief that we can do this and we need to look at a, an even bigger picture. Another round of applause, please. <laughs> the launch of the Ghana Oracle Digital Enterprise Program is being beamed live on television on the Joy News channel on the multi-TV box as well as across the continent on DSTV channel 421. And so, a good morning to the rest of Africa, and thank you for joining us. As I said earlier, I think the world just revolves around ideas. Today we all take for granted that we can use a smartphone, but a gentleman, however weird he was, in his moment of genius thought that human beings and technology must interface more intimately and then created the iPhone. Since then, a whole new space or technological sector has evolved with new players displacing others and disruption abounding. That's the way the world is going to be. Um, I overheard that um, in the next 20 years, lots of the jobs that we have today will no longer be there. I hope that in that evolution and disruption, there's room for MCs to continue to do their work. That's my prayer. I don't know about yours. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, help me welcome Maria Forni. She's the director of the Oracle Global Startup Ecosystem. And they are partnering the government to make this happen. Please join us here, Maria. Thank you so much. And yes, we need MCs. There's no robot that could replace you. Welcome. My name is Maria Forney, and it is a magnificent honor to visit Ghana for my first time and to be here with so many distinguished government leaders and promising startups founders, entrepreneurs, and future leaders of the African digital economy. Thank you, His Excellency, Mr. President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Vice President, Dr. Bawumia, Honorable Minister of Communications, Ursula Owusu Ekufel, her Majesty, United States Ambassador Stephanie Sullivan, Oracle Ghana Country Manager Franklin Atsare, Oracle Strategic Initiative Specialist for Africa, Adeo Duntun, thank you for hosting me here in your country during this exceptional time of growth an opportunity. I live in California near the Oracle headquarters in Silicon Valley. And as you may be aware, Oracle is one of the top providers of cloud-based software. We have a broad portfolio of solutions for companies and organizations of all sizes. Some of our most noteworthy customers in Africa include the government of Ghana, Echo Bank, and Fidelity Bank, Ghana. And as important as these large and successful entities are to the economy of Ghana, we mustn't overlook the critical role that startups play in providing employment, in strengthening an economy, and delivering unique solutions to some of the world's most pressing challenges. 
The Oracle Global Startup Ecosystem Program is our company's initiative to help entrepreneurs just like many of you here today. The program is unique in that we do not take an ownership stake. We don't take equity, but rather we focus on enabling the next generation of growth and business development to drive cloud-based ingenuity for startups, for our customers, for Oracle customers, as well as for Oracle itself. And we see this as a virtuous cycle of innovation. Today's announcement of the Ghana Oracle Digital Enterprise Program is our very first partnership of its kind on the continent of Africa. We're launching in Ghana first for three reasons. The first one being the business creativity that we observe in Ghana is unique and unparalleled. I saw it firsthand yesterday at the Accra Digital Center. It was very moving. The second reason that we are launching in Ghana is this partnership with the government of Ghana represents a shared commitment to the long-term success of the startup community here. And the third reason is that this fulfills our mission to reach startups in all corners of the globe, especially in promising and emerging markets such as this one. As the Oracle Global Startup Ecosystem is partnering with the government of Ghana to support startups, we encourage and we invite other corporate leaders, leaders to join us in this groundbreaking initiative. Today is the official launch and starting immediately, we look forward to supporting the leading innovators here in Ghana. And this effort can be strengthened and yield even greater results with additional partners who share our vision and who are prepared to help us execute. The people of Ghana strike me as creative, fearless, resourceful, and so earnest. And these are the same talents that we observe in so many of the startups that we work with across the globe. I once heard Oracle CEO Safra Katz say, nobody comes to meet with Oracle and says, I'm a small organization and I'd like to stay small. No. And I think this statement can be applied to Ghana. While this country may be geographically small compared to some of its peers, there is enormous optimism for the innovation and the technology advancements that are emerging here. And we are so impressed with His Excellency President Nana Akufu-Addo and His Excellency Vice President Dr. Bawumia for spearheading and being champions of this strategic partnership. It is our greatest honor to work with such visionary leaders in their efforts to increase the application of science, technology, and innovation in the development of the Ghanaian economy, society, and country. So to close, the Ghana Oracle 
Digital Enterprise Program represents a strong commitment to startups in Ghana. And we encourage the young entrepreneurs that are listening today to take advantage of this opportunity to leverage world-class tools and technology to address global challenges and provide digital jobs to the young population. I look forward to celebrating your success. Thank you for this opportunity, as well as your time and your hospitality. And there's something that we say on the Oracle Global Startup Ecosystem team that I'd like to leave you with this morning. Be bold. Thank you. And we certainly will be bold. It means a lot of different things, but at the core of it is that be bold. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to witness our first round of startups pitching their ideas. And I'd like to invite the judges who are going to hear them out. Uh, they've walked the walk, and uh, they want to see if these teams have what it takes to turn this opportunity of a magic bean into a massive beanstalk that can touch lives both here and around the world. I'd like to invite, first up on the stage, my judge number one is Mr. Saqib Nazer. He is a fintech entrepreneur. Uh, he loves to develop uh, businesses uh, using technology to solve local problems. Uh, currently, his business uh, is providing quite a lot of payment support for the National Health Insurance Authority and um, grew the business up and uh, recently also got acquired by Emergent Payments, uh, which is uh, one of the largest global uh, payment giants. Uh, let's welcome Mr. Saqib Nazir, who is uh, CEO of Emergent Payments Africa here in Ghana. Next up is a man who's the head of the delivery unit in the Vice President Secretariat at the Office of the President. He's a professor of strategy, former dean of the business school at Central University. He's a previously a consultant at uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers and also head of policy coordination, monitoring and evaluation at the Office of the President. Professor Kweku Apiedu. Next up is the CEO of Callens, um, Osei Badu, um, who an astute businessman uh, with more than two decades of experience. Let's welcome him, please. Next is the country leader of Oracle, a man who's passionate about skills development and scaling solutions and leadership, Mr. Franklin Asari. <laughs> and last but not the least, a very fierce and uh, enterprising South African, until recently uh, was the CEO of uh, Vodafone Ghana, but currently she is the head or the chief officer strategy uh, for mergers and acquisition and uh, for the Vodacom group and she oversees pretty much the entire continent. Ladies and gentlemen, Yolanda Kuba. It's time for a young men and women to step up hopefully hit a home run. I turn the microphone over to uh, Adepekba Oduntan to invite the startups onto the stage to pitch. I wish you all the best. Let's welcome him, please. Your Excellency, 
um, distinguished guests. It's a great honor to be here. My name is Adek Pegba Odunton. I handle strategic initiatives for Oracle for Sub-Saharan Africa. And um, just like uh, my colleague here, Mara Foni, had mentioned, Ghana is the very first stop on the uh, continent of Africa for this program. Yeah, and uh, it gives us great pleasure uh, to be here. Yesterday, we had the privilege of listening to wonderful startups, brilliant ideas, and today, Your Excellency, you'll be listening to just a few of them. Yeah, so uh, without much further ado, we have the first person coming up, Octopi. Can you come up, please? Octopi. So Octopi is, yes, please put your hands together. A brilliant startup that's into virtual reality, um, working with the FMCGs and different industries. I would leave them to do the rest. His Excellency. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor, His Excellency, to be here. My name is Edmond de Jensia. I'm here with Emmanuel Ose Ansa. We're co-founders of a computer graphics agency. We're into, we're a creative studio that is into animation, visualization, and experiential design. Our main services include motion graphics and architecture visualization and experience design for some of these clients. We've been around for a year and six months going, and we've had the privilege of working with some of these fantastic clients. Working with them, we identified three unique problems with some of these companies. One of them was the difficulty in the implementation of the kind of products that they were creating. The second thing was that for the architectural visualization clients, they had a one-dimensional approach to how they presented their architectural visualizations to their unique clients. And the third thing was the brands that used people as their brand ambassadors also had issues with how they handled and what benefits they were getting. With that, we came up with three unique solutions for, for them. The first being product visualization and motion design, experiential design in virtual reality and augmented reality, and then digital characters for brand communication and storytelling. I would just like to go through some of the stuff we've done. We partnered with a production company called Wilderness Productions and worked with Nestle Central and West Africa to do a visualization project of a house that allowed them to interact with their unique products. So this is an example of what they did. It was a virtual reality experience where you could take the products and experience them. It's a home, you walk around, you interact with all the unique different experiment experiences in there. And this provided them with a unique, completely different approach to how they handled all their goods and services. And it made it a lot more interesting and interactive to work with those different products. Our uh, experiential design and visualization project also extends to industrial, and we look forward to getting projects with some architecture firms and governmental project management agencies that deal with some of these things. Uh, second offering to solve these problems were product visualization for e-commerce and advertising. And these were some of the stuff we've been working on for the past one year, six months. They are, Nestle Central and West Africa is currently using this on some of their digital platforms to sell their goods and products. We also extend our services to product animation that allows the user, that allows the different companies to express more than just still 
photos. Oh God. Our third offering is digital characters. And our digital character characters allow hyper realistic characters that brands can use as they are the face of their brand. I'm very sorry, we're having some difficulty at the technical desk. Oh my god. Our digital character offering allows brands to have personalized human characters that they can use to communicate with different brands. The problem we are trying to solve here is allowing brands to own characters that they can use for so many unique activities. Usually when this happens, you have to pay for the person and every time you need to use the person's image, you need to continually keep paying. And that can be stressful on the different brands. So we are creating a solution for them to be able to have access to this character and use them however they want. As part of that, we do stylized characters to create an interesting storytelling story approach for education and medical purposes. We know children like a lot of these stuff, and this is a very good approach to making education very interesting for them. Our potential markets, as I've already stated some earlier, are listed above. So our business strategy is usually to create some of these examples and then approach the unique brands and let them understand what it would do to benefit their brands. We go to them with, sometimes we personalize the experiences or we personalize the product development and we present it to them and find out how it's going to improve their business in terms of advertising. We're, we have a design advertising and computer graphics background, and this allows us to have an in-depth conversation with our unique clients. What we do is, before you actually get to see whether it's an animation, a visualization project, we give you feedback and we give you information that you otherwise wouldn't know. And because we're coming from all of these backgrounds, we give you a diverse approach to what you could potentially do with all the different products that you have. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Octopi. And I'll turn my attention to the judges. Uh, do I have a quick question? Please uh, stay here. You will have to answer some questions. Hi. Hi, Edmund. I think it's an exceptionally uh, good idea that you've got. Um, what interests me is, I mean, every time we create a business, at the end of the day, we actually are there to make money. Yeah. What is your, your revenue model on, on your business? Can you come again, please? What is your revenue model on your business? So, we... The different services we offer come with different prices. So based on what a client is asking for, we draw up a, a roadmap and a plan and we build based on that. So we take whatever experiences we've built, go and pitch them, and if they like them, we move on from there. All right, I guess that will be all from the judges. Thank you very much, Octopi. And next we have Heritage Basket Hub. Please come up. Let's Thank welcome you. him, please. Thank you very much. Good morning, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jonathan Atua. I'm from Upper East Region, Bologna to be precise. Heritage Basket Hub, we produce, sell, and export locally made baskets from Bogatanga. These are our baskets made of um, straw. It's for shopping. Our business objective is to support partners, as in local partners, the, the women, establish, build, and viable commercial enterprises in order to earn and stabilize income. Our specific objectives, one, is to maximize revenue. 
Second, to seek to provide environmental solution. As we all know, plastic has become an issue of pollution in the world these days. So our baskets are alternative solution to the, to, to the plastic. We also create employment for the rural women and stimulate rural investment at the community level. Uh, we believe in rural investment as against social intervention. Uh, our business is currently engaging 600 women and youth, and uh, more, we are still registering more. Why we say we believe in rural investment is because these women are not vulnerable. They are entrepreneurial, they are creative, they are innovative. So the only support we give these women is buying the products. And as you buy the products, they are able to take care of their family and friends. So these are the women that we engage in. We have close to 15 groups, women groups that are in Borga. So these are the type of baskets we do. This is a laundry basket. Our target market is the European market, the US, the Asia market. African countries that have banned the use of plastics. Of course, we know currently Rwanda and Uganda has uh, banned plastic, so we are also entering there. We have so far shipped uh, five containers in 18 months. Why are we here? We are here. We want to leverage on the opportunities that Oracle is providing for us. And how do we do that? One, provide heritage baskets, a hub, hub, a platform that will enable us to navigate effectively, to communicate to our target market and potential prospects. Work on a better database system that guarantees effective information analysis. This is some of our baskets. This is another laundry basket. That is all for now. I am impressed, to say the least. Thank you. What technology would you like to deploy in terms of you would navigating and communicating with your market, as you say? Yes, of, um, we are looking at a, an e-commerce platform where we can engage our customers directly vis-a-vis -vis the internet, and also able to give back relevant feedbacks to our clients. Uh, why we need this is because, one, these women that weave these baskets, we have to tag their names and pictures of each basket that is woven by this woman so that the buyer, at the end of the day, appreciates the creativeness and innovation of this local woman. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Jonathan. A round of applause. It's not easy standing in front of dignitaries and strangers and trying to sell your idea. It's hard to do it just to one person at a room, a room full of people you hardly know. Uh, Ade, who's next? Health Direct is next. And uh, let's give them a round of applause, please. Access to universal health care coverage is non-negotiable. And let's face the fact, without health, we all have nothing. Now, according to the World Health Organization, millions of people die across the continent of Africa every single year due to a broken health care system. Now, the problems are threefold. First and foremost, there's untimely access to health care. Now, secondly, there's poor data and information systems. Thirdly, there's lack of access to financial assistance. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kelvin Ashi, and I'm a co-founder of Health Direct Global. Now, the solution we propose is a bundled value of mobile, web, and USSD-based platforms, which allows healthcare users to connect to an aggregated on-demand network of health service providers and health service prof professionals through secure 
biometric identification, and digital financial inclusion. Now, to simply explain how it works, a user is able to sign up onto our platform by themselves or through any of our partner network of health service providers. Now, at the point of signing up, a secure biometric identity is created for that individual. Now, this is particularly important because according to the United Nations, over 1.5 billion people globally have no form of digital identity. This essentially creates barriers to healthcare access. On top of this, people are able to um, request book and shadow appointments with doctors through our partner network. We also build an automated mobile payments wallet, which allows people to pay towards their healthcare needs, thereby ending the vicious cycle of poverty caused by emergency healthcare situations. These are screenshots of our technology on our mobile app, helping people to meet doctors. Also, this is the mobile wallet where people are able to save towards their healthcare needs based on their payment choice via mobile money, bank cards, or other payment channels. Also, the market is huge. With the same World Health Organization um, report in 2017, capping Africa's market at $35 billion, um, West Africa's market at $10.6 billion, and Ghana's market at $1.2 billion. Now, our business model is simple. We charge a 5% service charge for booking on our platform, and also in terms of the health um, service providers that we, we are starting to work with, um, starting from the private sector, we charge them a subscription fee on a monthly basis for the digitization of their electronic health records. We also make pay, um, um, commission based on transactions on our mobile payments platform. Our unit economic sees our customer acquisition costs pegged at $80, um, our annual profits per user at $150, and lifetime value of $3,500. Now, in terms of traction, we've been able to start engagements with 350 health service providers, majority of which are private hospitals. We've also generated 2,500 biometric identities through our, our private pilot and also onboarded 120 medical practitioners. Now, um, in February of this year, on this same stage, we're able to secure a partnership um, through SAP Global and Siemens, and we'll be visiting Johannesburg, South Africa next month. We are also backed by the German Chamber of Commerce and Tent Maker Ghana. Now, we are not in the space alone. We're in the space with the likes of My Doc GH, Save Doctor, and Book a Doc. But what sets us up apart is our multi-sided approach, looking, focusing on identity and preventing patient theft and patient mismatch, which can lead to a vicious um, emergency situation. In terms of our roadmap, we see ourselves working with Oracle in terms of digitization of health records and moving patient records to the cloud. On top of that, we are looking at data privacy, which is a key issue when it comes to the evolution of technology, where we are looking at encryption with blockchain technology um, and fusion with Oracle. Also, we are looking at interoperability of payment systems on, and also for these same health records to help identity to be one and the same anywhere across the country. Then, the bigger goal, of course, is telemedicine, where patient-centered technology is going to transform healthcare from now to the future. Ladies and gentlemen, the team is led by Amos Na, who has over seven years' experience in the health insurance industry, our technical lead, Abdul Sotomiwa, and, and also um, we have domain expertise backed by Dr. Daisy Hoxon and myself with a background in product management and strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a pain, there's a problem. But with Ghana and Oracle, we can change Ghana's healthcare industry. Thank you. Let's uh, go over to the judges for any questions they may have. The panel is very impressed. I guess their silence means that uh, you have a product to sell. <laughs> uh, well, wonderful. Okay, uh, but you do have a question? Oh, I, I, I want to get into some more detail offline in terms of how you're going to scale up. Um, mm. 
okay, more interested in that. Uh, if you can answer it just in a second, I'll be very grateful. In 30 seconds, how will you scale up? Um, in scaling up, we are looking at um, more of the interoperability. So once we start digitizing the healthcare records, we are looking at a seamless um, amalgamation of all different um, healthcare data sets. So we are starting with um, private hospitals. Then from there, with um, I believe Mr. Vice President here, we can start championing the course for um, public hospitals so that your data is one and the same across the country. Thank you very much, uh, Kelvin. Thank you. And uh, talk about coming with your A game. The man is prepared. He's pitching and he's probably signed his first customer already. <laughs> well, we'll take our final round of uh, pitching, and uh, this is a team that are focusing on using technology to support our agriculture sector. And I'm very interested in that, not because I love food, but it's more because of the importance of food security to global security and uh, human development. You can't dream if you are not uh, filled up in the belly. And it's important. So ladies and gentlemen, the team from Tech Shelter, let's welcome them. Let's go. Good morning, Your Excellency. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gifty Minta Akwashi, a co-founder of Tech Shelter Company Limited, where we maximize efficiency of vegetable greenhouse farming in Ghana. A greenhouse is a microenvironment where crops are grown under a regulated condition for an expected output. Now, meet Ajwa. Ajwa is a vegetable greenhouse farmer who owns a 135 meter square greenhouse. She grows tomato. Her expected yield is 2,000 kilos. But her current, her, sorry, her current yield, she only realizes 500 to 800 kilos after every cycle. There's a pain point. Now, her pain point is not limited to just her alone. About 70% of greenhouse farmers in Ghana right here are also facing the same challenge. And what are her pain points? The choice of structure, the economics of what to grow, when to go, how to go, and even who to go for is a problem. This leads us to our problem statement. Vegetable greenhouse farmers achieve only about 40% of expected yields due to inadequate knowledge, inefficient manual operations, and lack of marketing support. Tech Shelter provides a web and mobile application that enables greenhouse farmers to have access to on-demand advisory, automation, and market linkages. Now, how it works. Agile logs on onto our platform and fills in with her details and has access to all our services we provide. With, ad with advisory, she has an outbreak, a disease outbreak in her farm. All she needs to do is to take a smartphone or any smart device, take a pic of the crop affected, and upload it onto our platform. We have a pool of agronomic experts on our platform who attain to her. At the end of the day, if her problem still persists, what we're going to do is we deploy our experts onto her farm and intervene for her. We have automation. We have engineers in our midst who install IoT devices on manual operations for greenhouse farmers with the aid of an app to be able to control irrigation, fatigation, humidity, and mean life. Okay, so we make money in three simple ways. Through our service charge, that's advice you $100 per every cycle, subscription fee of $40 per month, and between 5 to 10 percent for market linkages created for the greenhouse farmers. Now, our value proposition is cost-effective, efficient, and we increase the yield of every farmers, every greenhouse farmer by 40 percent. That is why we are going to leverage on strategic partnership with Oracle to help us with their Sorry, we are cloud infrastructure, IOTs, and also the client-based segment to be able to improve on our solutions and scale up. Okay. 
Right. So for the first four months of our operations, we've been able to generate over fifteen thousand dollars, and with our services. Sorry. Now I'll go to market strategy. We leverage on strategic partnership with Cosmos Energy, AgriHealth Foundation, and Hortifresh. Now that's our roadmap. Behind this great innovation happening in the greenhouse industry is Paula Siedu, myself, Bob Hoxon, and Kennedy Edufa. Thank you very much. Judges, questions, please. Hello, I'm interested in how you're going to set up your I, um, an IoT. How are you going to set up your IoT? Who are going to be your partners? Okay, beautifully, we have worked through the process. We are using existing technologies where you have the relays, the sensors, and then we're using them to interface with the existing platforms, connect them to the structures where you use the fans, you have the misting systems. All these, we use the IOTs to instruct. So based on the sensors, indications. So let's say we have an upper limit temperature of 36, and we have a lower limit of 28. You set those parameters, and straight away, as soon as those temperatures or upper limits are hit, the systems kick in to bring down temperatures or kick in to reduce humidity. I hope that's fine. Did I answer your question, sir? All right. That's okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tech Shelter. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our pitching session. Uh, the first part, there's quite a few more coming up. But I think it's time we heard from the man who's been championing the digital agenda in the country, the very energetic. Vice President of the Republic. Let's welcome His Excellency Dr. <laughs> Mahmoudou Baumia. Thank you very much. I prefer this podium. It's the more colorful podium. <laughs> Minister for Communications, Ministers of State, your Excellency, the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, members of the Diplomatic Corps, the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, uh, Director of Oracle Global Startup Ecosystem, Maria Forni, CEOs here present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am very delighted to be here this morning for the launch of the Oracle global startup program. I know a lot of work has gone into making this happen, and I would like to thank all of you who have worked so hard to bring this to fruition. In particular, I would like to thank our very hard-working Minister for Communications, Asila Osuefo-Ekofo. She's really the digital champion for Ghana. And we are so fortunate, so, so fortunate in this country to have her as the Minister for Communications at this time of our development. Anytime you want to talk to her about an idea, she has, she's already three or four steps ahead of, of what you are thinking. And it's, she gets it, so it makes it much easier for us to do things. So thank you very much, Ursula. History, ladies and gentlemen, teaches us that countries that master technology are those that largely prosper. And so this is why the president, Nanado Danko Akufuado, has made it a point that as part of the transformation uh, that we want to see in Ghana, technology has to be a critical part of it. Last year, we visited Silicon Valley um, to get to see how things are happening uh, all out there and to get to the forefront of technology. And, and one of our hopes was to be able to build some partnerships with the big players like Oracle. And today, 
I am so happy to see this blossoming. And thank you so much uh, for, for, for this happening. The Industrial Revolution that swept Europe and then the rest of Africa and the world, the Industrial Revolution that swept Europe and then the rest of the world, testifies to this observation. As the age of machines peaks, a new revolutionary wave is ushering global economies into the 21st century. First is technology itself, and second is innovation in technology. Information technology has contributed to the rapid digitization of a large percentage of interactions in the world. More advanced countries are on the cusp of new innovation, constantly rolling out new technology to improve daily life and simplify hitherto daunting mundane tasks. The people and government of Ghana are not ignorant of the, dis of the advantages and advances of the digital age. We are embracing and indulging in new technology heartily and with open minds. Our national life is being infused with current technology, spanning the national identification system, digital address system, paperless port systems, e-banking systems, mobile money platforms, mobile money interoperability, and so on. The government, under the leadership of His Excellency the President, Nana Kofuado, have set a digitization agenda to improve efficiency of many government agencies, how, access to public, how to access public services, how to deliver them, how to pay for them, and where there is a charge, and ultimately help eliminate the temptation to corrupt simple processes and procedures that are meant to improve the quality of life of the citizenry. Technology has changed traditional production and consumption dynamics. Its use in agriculture in some countries enables farmers to make advised projections for the yield of their crop and the health of the soil. We just saw a pitch just now, uh, which is, I don't even know, uh, the, uh, the Minister of Communications was asking, why is this only applicable to greenhouses? Because the offer is applicable to all farmers, right? So we should be pitching across. Um, medical diagnosis and healthcare delivery gradually attain precision as technology enables stakeholders to see more and record better data than previously possible. And we also saw another pitch on medical technology and bringing all this data together um, so nice. Daily interactions with our loved ones, receiving money just in time to take care of pending matters, efficiently applying for and receiving national documents like passports or driver's licenses, and quickly moving goods from the ports onto the market to satisfy customer demands are but a few areas that digitization is improving for our benefit. A singular innovation of zipline technology, uh, which by the way, I had met them in Silicon Valley during my last visit, and this is why we brought them to Ghana. Uh, singular innovation of zipline te drone technology for example, is helping to overcome the geophysical barriers that might impede the delivery of goods, services, or much needed medical attention and supplies across the country. And the drone technology, as I stated, will start delivery of medical supplies in Ghana in three weeks. Uh, and we are looking forward to that. Even the subtlest of changes in the social life of a citizenry, all put together ultimately influence the economy. The benefits of reducing inefficiencies, tracking inputs and outflows more accurately, shortening turnaround time, yielding more free time for increased productivity and ease of access to required information and services translates intangible into tangible currency. 
The next level is encouraging Ghanaians to test their metal by exploring what they can contribute to the world of technology inno innovation. This is why government chooses to invest in programs that encourage and support the use of digitization and innovation in technology. The extension of the fiber optic network to cover the Western Corridor as well as the Eastern Corridor should increase connectivity and provide fast, reliable broadband network service to residents in regions in that area. The Smart Workplace Platform is another initiative government is undertaking to stimulate and sustain seamless communication within and between government agencies. With much of our lives becoming digitized, we firmly have our eyes on cybersecurity. The Data Protection Commission and the National Cybersecurity Center are constantly on the alert, ensuring accountability of all stakeholders and protecting data in the government and private sectors. The numerous programs being put in place to ensure that Ghana is poised to benefit from technology and to reap the rewards of the new age will, will be remiss without encouraging our people to contribute to technology by bringing their innovative ideas to bear in the industry. We are a resourceful and innovative people forever embracing new methods of doing things and growing diverse talents in different ways. The youth's affinity for information technology and their adoption of social media to pursue commendable projects in commerce, entertainment, and knowledge acquisition has not escaped our notice. Indeed, uh, when you look at our youth, they are really specially talented in the area of ICT. It's just incredible uh, the sort of things that they are doing all across the, the, the country. Um, and what you're seeing, the pictures that we, are, we have seen so far, and I'm sure you'll see more pictures, uh, uh, it's just incredible talent. And, and, and we're we so thankful for that. Indeed, many a market woman, wholesaler, or retailer of goods and service providers has at one time or the other been encouraged by their more technology savvy young relatives to set up a social media account to help increase their customer base and reach of advertisement. The vulgar uh, baskets that uh, Jonathan displayed to us, for example, uh, with these partnerships will, uh, through e-commerce could really help reach a much wider market. Recognizing that our nation's enhancement and enchantment with technology is not limited to product use only, we are excited to have identified digital entrepreneurs, some of whom have tech start startups. The Technology Innovation Hub, or the Ghana Innovation Hub, aims to nurture these startups and draw out similar digital entrepreneurs. By providing avenues and support to the youth to engage their intellect and display their ability and skills in designing, deploying, and deploying useful technological tools and apps, we are doing more than keeping them busy. We are making the Ghanaian digital footprint larger and more meaningful. I believe government's efforts at improving the workforce and empowering citizens to venture into non-traditional employment opportunities in ICT innovation will be augmented by this collaboration with the Oracle Global Startup System. In fact, I see this partnership with Oracle as one of the game changers that we are going to be seeing in Ghana. We are starting up with 500, and I know from what the Minister for Communications is hinting, she wants it to move to 1,500 very soon. I encourage all tech enthusiasts, tech startups, and tech companies to take advantage of all the avenues created by the government of Ghana, and through this new partnership 
with Oracle. Actively be part of the platforms and services for your disposal to unearth latent talents. Showcase and sharpen your strengths and, comp and competencies. We must attain the heights where technology becomes a pliant tool by which our socioeconomic and physical environment is manicured into a legacy, a desired legacy worth living, living to posterity. Ladies and gentlemen, those who do not apply new remedies must inevitably expect new evils. Ghana looks forward. We are the gateway to Africa, the ever shining black star with a forward-looking mindset. It is not by coincidence that we were the first country in sub-Saharan Africa to seek independence. And today, it is not by coincidence that Google has decided to set up its headquarters for artificial intelligence in Africa in Accra. And it, and it is not by coincidence that Oracle has decided to set up its first such partnership in Africa, again, in Ghana. And we are very thankful. We are very thankful. We only expect new glorious breakthroughs because at present we are ready to apply new remedies with the digitization and technology in innovation. Thank you very much for your attention. God bless you and God bless our homeland Ghana. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That brings us to the end of the first part of uh, today's proceedings.